Hi, I'm Ray Young. I'm an emeritus professor from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I'm continuing with my series of lectures on Polynesian cultures of the South Pacific. Uh, in this second part, we'll talk about the uh, voyages of Captain Cook to Polynesia, one of the first Europeans to visit there. Uh, in the first lecture, we talked about the voyagers coming from Southeast Asia, the Austronesians, to inhabit uh, Polynesia. Uh, they came to the Polynesian Triangle, where the, the Polynesian culture developed in Samoa, and the triangle is defined by Hawaii in the north, New Zealand in the southwest, and Easter Island in the southeast, with Tahiti, the French Polynesia, or Society Islands in the center, and Samoa and Tonga at the western end, the origins of the Polynesian culture. Um, we're going to talk about Captain James Cook, and why do we talk about Captain James Cook? He was the first European to visit many of the islands, in particular Hawaii. Um, he was said to be a benevolent captain, but the important part is in his voyages that he had uh, Joseph Banks, a botanist, and several other scientists, and they recorded the history of Polynesia, the archaeology, the characteristics. Uh, the Polynesians didn't have a written language, so it's a, a recording of his a lot of his documents and his logs that gives us the uh, history and anthropology, anthropology of the uh, Polynesians. They traveled in the Endeavor, a boat of 100 feet long, 30 feet wide, not a big boat, with a crew of 94. It must have been very packed. They had a large hold uh, in the ship to carry a lot of the supplies they needed. He carried out three voyages to Polynesia from 1768 to 1779, and they were two to four years long. Um, this is a, a considerable uh, a monumental adventure, uh, adventure for these people. He never knew what he was going to encounter, he and the crew, when they visited. And this is what one of the greetings they received from the Maori in New Zealand, what is present-day New Zealand. Uh, the Maori or warriors performed on the haka, the, the posturing, grimacing, and chanting. In his log, he wrote, A hundred Maori jumped left to right, then reversed, brandished tongues, turned up whites of eyes, accompanied with strong hoarse sound, assumed to cheer each other and intimidate the enemy. Uh, the haka is sometimes performed by the University of Hawaii football team to invigorate the uh, football players. Now, many of the islands, uh, some were hostile to the Polynesians. Uh, oftentimes, they were friendly, though. At Tahiti, they were particularly friendly, as we know from some of the history. Uh, it, it's shown here in this slide is the uh, Captain Cook's third voyage. He did three voyages, as I mentioned. Uh, his first voyage was to uh, observe the transit of Venus for confirmation of the distance to the sun using uh, astrological information and uh, algebra. Um, but also the secret mission from Britain was to map and claim regions for, for Britain. Um, but the voyagers noted many of the unique features of the Polynesian, their language, appearance, and customs, as I mentioned. His second voyage was to clear up the existence of the southern continent, being Antarctica. And uh, this he did. He mapped some of it, but all he could say was that there was nothing but fog and a field of ice, and he soon returned. Uh, his third voyage, which followed uh, the path of the other voyages, more or less, uh, is shown here in this slide. Uh, this mission was to uh, map the Northwest Passage. So he traveled through around New Zealand, around Tahiti, and uh, into the Hawaiian Islands. And uh, he, he was received in the Hawaiian Islands in a, a very auspicious way. Uh, he was met by 1,000 canoes and 10,000 people, a, a rousing greeting. They were quite surprised, the whole crew, at this greeting they received. Uh, Captain Cook reported that all the islanders fell flat on their faces and remained that way till I made signs for them to rise. And f four priests greeting him, uh, repeating the word Lono. Uh, they thought him the reincarnation of the Hawaiian god Lono. He had arrived during the Makahiki festival, a Hawaiian harvest festival in worship of the Polynesian god Lono. So this explained his warm greeting, however he didn't quite understand this. They showered them with gifts and food and so on. However, after going up and uh, mapping uh, Canada and, and uh, into the Bering Sea, mapping parts of 
Alaska. He returned to Hawaii and the, uh, the Makahiki Festival was over and they were greeted him actually hostily. They were confused at his return and they actually stole hardware and then actually one of his cutter boats from his ship. This irritated Cook quite strongly so he went with a small crew onto the island um, and he confronted uh, the chieftains and actually took one of the chiefs hostage to hold him, him till he re they returned his goods. However, a skirmish resulted and Captain Cook was stabbed and then the other islanders jumped in and stabbed him. He died at 52 years old and it's very unfortunate because he was said to be a benevolent uh, captain and uh, it shows that there was a, definitely a cultural uh, misunderstanding which uh, led to the loss of his life. That was in 1779 in Kealakakua Bay in, on the island of Hawaii. We couldn't um, complete this discussion of the voyages from uh, Europe without a mention of the mutiny on the bounty or the, the uh, ship the bounty with Captain William Bly and his crew of 44 who traveled to uh, Tahiti uh, after his third voyage on Captain Cook's boat. His purpose was to collect the breadfruit tree as a food source for the Caribbean slaves. So they arrived in Tahiti, they spent five months uh, growing the seedlings and hardening the plants for the long trip back. But during that time his crew became very comfortable in Tahiti with, and they were enamored with the women, women and lifestyle and the ease of life. But after their five months, Bly rounded them up and, and uh, it was time to return. But three months into the voyage, a mutiny occurred. Now it was said that uh, Bly was cruel and abusive, but he was probably more dogmatic and vain, which the sailors resented, and they really didn't want to return after the life of ease on Tahiti. But Bly and, and uh, mutineers, the set, but uh, Fletcher Christian rather, and the mutineers set Bly and 18 others adrift in 1789 on a 27-foot boat with only five days of food and water. Amazingly, they, uh, they, they survived a 47-day trip, 4,000 miles, and landed in Indo Indonesia. Uh, luckily, the prevailing winds and currents uh, drove them there. Fletcher Christian then and the mutineers returned to Tahiti, but 16 of the mutineers stayed on the island, but Fletcher Christian wasn't comfortable and he felt that he needed to move on, so he and nine mutineers and 20 Polynesians uh, traveled on to, including many Polynesian women, traveled on to Pitcairn Island, which they discovered uh, more or less uh, unknown out in the Pacific, actually another Polynesian island. Uh, later on, a year later, the HMS Pandora with Captain Edwards went back to Tahiti and captured 14 of the mutineers, three of which were hanged back in England. So uh, the story of Pitcairn Island is a history in itself. So um, that completes our discussion of the European interactions, but uh, our next lecture will be on the uh, features of the Polynesians, their physical appearance, language, pottery, fish hooks, tools, weapons, temples, carvings, and statues, tattooing, dance, and plant usage. So join me for my third lecture on the features of the Polynesians and we'll discuss a lot of details of their culture. Thank you.